Section 2.8, Naming Inorganic Compounds. Okay, so very big lesson here today. Uh, you're, gonna, you're going to be talking about nomenclature, and that's the naming of uh, compounds, the naming them based upon the elements that's contained in them. There are two basic types of compounds that are named different ways. You have organic compounds, which all are kind of carbon-based, and then inorganic compounds. We're doing inorganic chemistry this year, so we're going we're gonna to do an inorganic naming system. So the first one we're going to look at is uh, ionic bonds. And ionic bonds are made out of ions, and ions are charged. So either they have more electrons or less electrons than a neutral atom does. Anything to the left side of the periodic table generally tend to be positive, and those are called cations. So a positive cation, um, and it's according to the group that it's in, the column that it's in. So anything in group one will, will tend to be positive one. Group two, positive two. Group three, positive three. Some of the very bottom ones, uh, tin and lead, can be um, positive four at times. So, so you're just looking for the left side of the periodic table will be uh, positive. The elements that are in red here are showing anions, and an anion is a negative charged ion, and they're named backwards. So um, what's actually happening here, group eight, which are the noble gases, um, are very stable, very electrically stable. In fact, um, they're so stable that all the other ones are essentially trying to imitate the valence shell electrons. And a valence shell means the outside electrons of a group eight. There are eight outside electrons. The very last shell of electrons, there's eight. And there's such stability there that this fluorine, ha that which has seven, will steal an electron, become negatively charged, and then have a stability like, like the noble gases. Group six, which are all have six in their outer shell, the 6A group, um, it wants to also have a configuration like group eight, so it will steal two. And group five wants to be like group eight, so it steals three. So when we had group one, group one is positive one, group two is positive two, group three is positive three, you have to go backwards when you're look, thinking of negatives. So group seven would be negative one, group six would be negative two, Group three, or good group five would be negative three. So this is a um, this is how you would name them. You would name them with the cation first. The cation in this case would be sodium, um, and then the anion changes its last name to i. So you're going to take a suffix i. So instead of saying chlorine, take the i and e i and e off, and you'd say chloride. And so put them together, it's sodium sodium chloride. So sodium chloride um, has a one-to-one, -one, so one charge positive, one charge negative. They will cancel, so all, all compounds are going to be electrically neutral. So here's one from group two and group six, so it's a two-to-two. -two. So this is also just two-to-two uh, -two would cancel also, so it's one-to-one -one here. And so this would be magnesium, just name it according to its normal element name, and then oxide instead of oxygen, it's oxide, so magnesium oxide. Aluminum is in group three, you just name it aluminum. Sulfur is in group six, it changes to sulfide. Notice that I needed some, I needed some uh, subscripts here. This is three and this is two, so I can't put three and two together and cancel, so I need a multiple of two and three. So three times two, three times two is six, and two times three is six, uh, and that's why you have ALS3. Now you don't say them, you're just going to ignore them. When you have ionic bonds, you ignore the subscripts in, in, the, in how you say it. You just say aluminum sulfide. Uh, when we get to molecular bonds, you'll see that you actually have to say those subscripts. So here, uh, in the middle of the periodic table, you've got, um, it's a little bit weird. You're not in group one, you're not in group two, you're kind of in the middle here. These are the B's in the US system of naming, uh, 3B, 4B, 5B, it goes, it goes from 1 to 10B. And so what you'll see is that they will often, almost all of them, have multiple charges that they can be. 
And because they have multiple charges, they could be, for instance, here's an example, copper can be copper one, or it can be copper two. Well, I can't say copper oxide. If there's two forms of copper oxide, I need a name for cop the, the one and for the other. So it's named just based on its charge. If it's a positive one, this name is not copper, it's copper one, and the one is a Roman numeral, and this would be copper two. So it's named exactly like it, only with the Roman numeral. So um, if you were to have oxygen that is part of the anion, so for instance, here is nitrogen. If you just had nitrogen, which is uh, would be negative, negative three, it would be called nitride, I-D-E ending. But if you have oxygen embedded in that anion, so it's still a negative charge, there's oxygen there, you name it a little bit differently. So you don't have an I-D-E ending, uh, you have eight, A-T-E ending. And A-T-E is the most common or most abundant form of that oxygen compound as an anion. And you won't know that, how do you know? You'd have to be told um, nitrate is uh, more abundant than nitrite in the world, and so this would this more common form is called nitrate, NO3, negative one. And then the ite is simply one fewer oxygens. So instead of NO3, it's NO2. So if you have an NO2, that's called nitrite. So NO3 would be nitrate, NO2 nitrite. Here's another example with sulfur. The normal form or the most abundant form would be sulfate, SO4 negative two. The one less ox uh, oxygen would be sulfate. Fight, SO3, negative 2. So, ite is one less oxygen than 8. In a couple of rare examples, you're going to have uh, just chlorine and bromine are the only two that I know of. You're going to have four forms of, of oxygen combining with a nonmetal. So, for instance, the common form or the representative form of chlorine with oxygen is chlorate, ClO3, negative 1. If you have one fewer oxygens, it's chlorite, ClO2, negative one, and that's like you saw with sulfate and nitrate. Um, in this case, you're gonna have four forms. One, two fewer than eight is called hypochlor, in this case, ite, so hypochlorite, hypobromite. And if you have one more atom than, than the common or the normal, then it's perchlorate. So you'll have just a few. You'll have permanganate, um, perbromate. They're very, very few. So, so if you were to have, this is normal eight. One fewer oxygen is ite. Two fewer oxygens would be hypoite. So, for instance, sodium hypochlorite is bleach. That's what you call Clorox. So eight going one more oxygen than eight would be perchlorate, perbromate. This is a list of mainly polyatomic ions. You're going you're gonna to have a list that you're going to learn. Many of these are oxygen, uh, called oxyanions, where there's oxygen embedded. So hypochlorite, we saw chlorite, chlorate, um, phosphate, which is PO4-3. Um, you can modify these, like you can add hydrogens. You can, so hydrogen is positive one, so positive one and a negative three kind of chops off one of the negatives and makes it two, so it's hydrogen phosphate. You can do it twice. Dihydrogen phosphate, where uh, two positives are chopping off two of the negatives, making it negative one. Uh, so as you name them, uh, I, you, I just learn them as a unit. So I would say, okay, that is chromate, Cr, CrO4, negative two, that's chromate. So then you name them just like normal anions. You don't call them ide, you call them by their name. So you would call it sulfate or sulfite or whatever. So when so we've just done ionic. Ionic bonds are positive cations, negative anions. When you're naming molecular compounds, molecular, which means molecules, they normally are shared electrons sharing between nonmetals. And nonmetals are the upper right-hand corner of the periodic table. So carbon and oxygen and nitrogen and chlorine and anything in that upper right corner. And so if you have molecules combining together and making a, making a molecule out of it, they, they combine in a, in a different way. And so they need to be named differently. 
and you name them according to the prefixes of their subscript. So, for instance, H2O, we call it by its common word, water, but the, that is a non-metal, that's a molecule, and so it would be called dihydrogen, dihydrogen oxide. So it's named just like the other one where the anion has IDE ending, but all of these guys would have to, to there. So here's an example. So for instance, you have nitrogen and fluorine. If, if this were an ionic compound, we'd just call it nitrogen fluoride. Remember, ionic compounds just ignore the, pre, uh, the subscripts. But since this is non-metal with non-metal, it's a molecular compound, I need to name it according to the binary uh, names, which is the Greek prefixes. So this would be di-nitrogen tetrafluoride. So I name them uh, based upon their, their subscripts. If you have a um, something starting with a vowel and you've ended with a vowel, so for instance, mono monoxide, so carbon monoxide. Notice too, you don't say monocarbon. Anything that you start with, if the one that's uh, that you start with is just to the one, you just say carbon. And then this one has to have the prefix is monoxide. Well, you don't say monoxide. You just smear them together and say monoxide. Same thing here. Uh, dinitro uh, dinitrogen tetraoxide turns into tetroxide. And finally, we have acids. An acid is a hydrogen compound, uh, and it's named based upon the anion that it combines with. Hydrogen will always be a uh, positive one. So if you have H plus Cl, okay, so Cl by itself would be chloride. That's, that's Cl, okay, chloride, Cl negative one. Well, if you have chloride and now you've added hydrogen, you name it with hydro plus ic. So hydrochlor, because from chloride, hydrochloric, and then last name acid. So an acid is something that can donate a hydrogen. The hydrogen will always be out front. Hyd so you know it's an acid. So I could call this hydrogen chloride, okay, because we named it according to the front and the back. But if you remember the first slide I showed you, hydrogen was red. It wasn't blue. It, it, it didn't show up like a cation. It's actually a non-metal. It's not a metal. So, so you don't, it's not considered a cation, even though it's positive one. So we call it, it's an acid. So we'll name it an acid. So if, if, if your first guy, if your cation is a positive uh, hydrogen, then you don't say it hydrogen chloride, which would be its normal name. You use its acid name, which is chloric, so hydrochloric acid. Anything that's eight, which like ClO3 is eight, would be uh, go to ick. So chlorate go, with an acid goes to hydrogen chlorate, but its acid name is chloric acid. Perchlorate goes to perchloric acid. Eits go to us. So eights go to ick. Ites go to us, so chlorite, ClO2 negative 1, turns into chlorous acid, HClO2. And hypochlorite, ClO negative 1, goes into hypochlorous acid.